Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I returned from Spain a week ago where I came from blue skies and sunny weather in Barcelona to a snowy week in the Pacific Northwest. The kind of weather that is perfect to recover from jet lag and to refuel with hot chocolate. All winter I wanted to create an artwork inspired by hot chocolate and this is the perfect week for it. I love to combine what's real with what is in my imagination. As a child, Mary Poppins was a favorite movie, and I find that making illustrations with photographs of the real world is a way to satisfy that kind of inspiration. So in this video, I'll walk you through how I create this artwork in the app Procreate on the iPad. If you like to combine your drawings with photos in Procreate, I recommend these YouTube videos on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. So the first thing I like to do is use a canvas that is 12 by 12 inches. And the reason I do that is because that's the perfect square size for Instagram. And I like to kill two birds with one stone and not have to resize. So now I'm just importing my sketch. And I recommend using photo depositories online like Unsplash and Pexels. This one is from Unsplash. And I use this photo as inspiration for the cup and the angle of it. So I sort of pictured this person inside the cup and that I just found something that would work. So I did this sketch just, you know, as a fun project as I was relaxing. And I just imagined that this cup would be on a table and there would be a window in the background. And I debated whether I should draw that or bring a photo in. And so here you're gonna see that I decided to bring a photo in. And this one too is from Unsplash. You can see the photo doesn't fit, so I'm going to use the Move tool and the tools down below, and I'm using a combination of Freeform and Distort and the Uniform and the Warp tool to make this photo fit the square shape. Now, this doesn't work with photos with more information. Landscapes and this kind of square format you know the window makes it easy because whatever I do to distort it isn't going to make it look very different from its original form so this is just something that you can play with now there are lots of photos on Pexels and Unsplash that would work in the square format very easily but here you can see that I've pretty much distorted it as much as it's going to go and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in some of the information that I have lost in the bottom right hand corner. To do that, I'm just gonna add a new layer and I'm going to use my inking brush, the Studio Pen brush, and I'm just going to select the color of the photo, that part of it that I wanna fill in, and you can see here that I'm covering up that one little line as well, and just adding in this information. So like I said before, I pictured this cup on a table. And so I'm going to pretend like this piece of fabric is my table. So this is a, just a photo of some fabric that I took and it's very bright and you can see it really clashes with my background photo. So now I'm just adjusting down below the hue, the saturation and the brightness. And I still don't have it the, to the color that I'm looking for. So now I'm adding a light blue layer on top of it. And I'm going through the blend modes to see if I can't tone down that fabric a little bit more. And what I'm trying to do is just make the fabric uh, not, I mean, I want it to jump out, but not that much. I don't want it to detract from the background or from my illustration. So I'm pretty happy with where I have it. I landed on hue and now I'm going to use these colors as my palette, my inspiration for the palette, for the actual drawing. So here you can see I'm adding a brand new palette and I'm just selecting some of those colors from the fabrics and I'm going to use those to create the cup. So once I'm happy with the background and the fabric down below, now I'm going to use that a studio pen brush that's under inking and I'm just filling in all of the shapes from my sketch and you can see that I've turned off the layers of the background so that I'm not distracted and I can see what I'm doing really clearly. I'll put all of the different cup 
parts on their own layers. And that way, if something needs to be adjusted, it's just really easy for me to adjust each individual part. So now I'm turning on the body of the cup and you can see that I need to remove information from the handle. So I'm just gonna drop the opacity of that layer. I'm gonna use the S tool above and the freehand tool below and I'm just going to make a selection so that I can swipe three fingers and then hit cut to remove part of that handle. Now it's time to ink the figure and you can see that the sketch is just really pretty basic and so the details are going to come once I start inking her and here you can see that I'm just doing the complete outline of all of her skin parts that are showing and just this very you know rose color and I'll drop the opacity and then use a darker skin tone to put in some of the details and you can see here that I'm just using uh, just variations of that same color, just a little bit darker. So now I've turned on the background layers again, and I am increasing the opacity of her skin and the cup so I can get a sense of how my illustration is looking with the background. I want her eyes to be more dramatic since she doesn't have a lot of details. I want her eyes to really stand out so I've made them pretty big and I'm going to put all of their parts on different layers as well. And you can see here that I'm using the same brown of her hair for her irises and then I will use a nice bright white underneath those so that they really stand out. I like to add some creative touches for the eye shine of her eyes. Sometimes it's fun to also use stars. So once I'm happy with the way her eyes look, I'm moving just to a simple nose and her lips. And I'll just use a darker skin tone for her nose. I'll adjust her mouth and color in just a moment, but I need to add a little bit of shade for her neck. And here you can see I'm just cleaning up some little parts that sometimes get away from me. Drawing the human figure isn't easy. I take a lot of figure drawing classes. I find them to be really relaxing and it's going to take me years to get better at it. But one thing with breasts is that they need to have some weight to them. And so that's why I'm adding a little bit of shade here to make them a little bit more realistic. So I'm actually not a big marshmallow fan in my hot chocolate, but I felt like she needed a little bit of something in this cup of hot chocolate with her. And I was gonna put in a rubber duck and then I thought, you know, that might just be a little confusing. I really want this to show that it's hot chocolate. So I'm adding the marshmallows for effect. And you can see that right now I'm adding just a little bit of shadowing so that way they look a little more dimensional. I'm adding a layer and with the organic brush, I'm using the cotton to add a little bit of steam coming off the hot chocolate, but I wanna make sure that I don't um, detract from her. So I'm just playing with it, just trying to be subtle with it. Because it is a simple illustration, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of umph with some bokeh lights and also some glimmer in the background. And it's really easy to get carried away. So I'm, you'll see me uh, removing some and then try starting over just until I get it right. I don't want to cover up the cup or her with the bokeh. I'm again using the studio pen under inking to create a little floral motif on the cup. I really like how the figure turned out. She seems really self-satisfied and comfortable in her skin, which makes me really happy. So I hope that you find her inspiring as well. And here I'm using the warp tool just to move that little floral motif just so it looks a little more in line with the roundness of the cup. 
Here I decided that her lips needed a little bit more of a happy look. I mean, she is soaking in hot chocolate after all. So I'm just giving them just a little bit of a curve so that it looks like she's a little happier. I like to find ways to make the artwork even more cohesive. So I think that bringing another bit of illustration into the background achieves that and so I'm using some cool tones just to bring in a rainbow. I hope this video has inspired you to bring some photos together with your illustrations. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. I'm happy to answer them. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and attention and if you like my videos thank you for giving them a thumbs up. Happy creating everyone!